the congressman yeah. can't stand. The Secret Service heard that. They took issue enough to go and talk to the Trump campaign. Is it really the contention of the Trump campaign that there's that the, all the people who heard a suggestion of violence, joking or not, in those remarks were that we're all just insane? Uh, well, first of all, I, I think he said it. Go out and vote, and that's what he meant. And the reality is, people who are in, uh, belong to the NRA or Second Amendment supporters, they are very responsible, and they know how to go out and uh, use their political clout. But, you know, i got to say, I've represented the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center for 22 years where the Secret Service trains. It's none of their position to go out and advise candidates on how to speak. Where were they, for example, in June of 2008 when Barack Obama said, and I quote directly, if they bring a knife to the fight, we bring a gun. I don't think they were advising him. They didn't They didn't have a meeting with the Trump campaign to offer advice. Just, just to they had a meeting to investigate. I'm questioning the premise that they actually did it, because I'd love to know, when did the Secret Service get involved in giving candidates advice? Well, the, 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 um, I think, I don't know what they said. I mean, the, 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 knife and gun, the knife and gun thing position. is a famous speech from the movie The Untouchables. It's Sean Connery talking to Kevin Costner. If they bring a knife, you bring a gun. Yeah. If it's, well, it's, it's, let, me, let me say this. I have seen that statement since 2008. I never knew it was alluding to a, a movie. I don't think most people in America did. Where was the outrage from the left when Barack Obama said that, and it was right in the wake of a shooting in Arizona, by the way, and he was running against John McCain. So we have to say, if we're going to measure candidates with the same yardstick, why wasn't there outrage when Barack Obama said something, which to me was very, very specific? Okay. I'm going to bring our time machine back to 2016. Hey. <laughs> and Amanda, I just want to ask you, how did you interpret it? Listen, one of the reasons I was a speechwriter for Senator Mint, Senator Cruz, I care very deeply about the meaning of words, and I think it's paramount that our leaders speak with clarity so there's no mistaking what they mean to our friends, allies, enemies. Donald Trump may not have meant this, but people could walk away from that, and I really care about this because working on the Hill in the area where there's security alerts, lockdowns, when I've been in an office, there's been bullets fired, and you don't know what direction they're going. This is a hot environment, and there's unstable people that are attracted to the political process, but I hope to God that Donald Trump takes the warnings from Secret Service seriously and tries to ramp it back, or at least acknowledges among his team that he has to be more precise. I, I want to know how, you, how, how did you take the comments? Well, as a, as a Second Amendment advocate, a gun owner, an NRA member, um, what po bothers me most is that this is not how Second Amendment advocates talk. Second Amendment advocates know that it exists to resist tyranny, not an elected political official carrying out her elected duties. That's not the role of the Second Amendment. It's not a political punchline. It's not a, an empty threat or a casual joke at a campaign rally. But that's, how, well, that's what you thought deeply. it was. You thought it was a casual joke at a campaign rally. I, th I think he was we pandering are, are. to a group of people he is pretending to understand. Donald Trump doesn't understand gun issues, just as recently as after the Orlando shooting. He called for more gun control. He once believed in an assault weapons ban. He's he's rented conservative well, values for the duration I, of his campaign. Say, I, I have to say, um, maybe he doesn't understand them to your standard, but Second Amendment and NRA members do understand it. And they do understand that Omar Mateen's pro-gun control dad was on the front row of a Hillary Clinton debate, a rally. And the question is, why does this, why is this guy in the front row of Hillary Clinton? And, uh, you know, I he has said because she's a Democrat. about an issue when it's just completely veered yeah, off. Yeah, but here's the We did cover that. He's pro-gun control. How do we have a, a, a conversation, control. Congressman, how do we have a conversation on a topic when uh, every Trump supporter just veers it off to something else? I do, understand. Do well, let me get through it slowly. I'll go through it slowly. You should hear about Trump's comments on it. Here is a guy who's pro-gun control. He's on the front row of Hillary Clinton's rally. His, his son is, was a terrorist who, who recently killed 49 people. The Second Amendment people understand this guy is supporting Hillary Clinton. And Donald Trump is supporting the Second Amendment gun owners' rights. Yeah, and, they, they, and he's saying go out and vote, which is what they're going to do. For whatever it's worth, Hillary Clinton decried and denounced that man, Sadiq Mateen, and said she, did not, she disavowed and didn't want his support uh, yes, yesterday.